r slash ask reddit what's the saddest thing that happened to an old school friend you don't see anymore had a degenerative back problem in his late 20s began a series of surgeries that essentially rebuilt his spine from top to bottom shortly after the last procedure went to visit his parents up north for christmas slipped on ice on their front steps and smashed all the work that was done committed suicide within a week damn this is the one that got me best friend in elementary school got deported back to russia with his abusive parents used to spend all day at my place to avoid going home this one makes me really sad whenever i get a bit sad thinking about him i imagine he ended up on some sort of really cool adventure like in everything is illuminated i hope he's okay now and grew up to be a perfectly normal adult despite his dark childhood the saddest thing that happened to someone i know from school is nothing he never did anything. After high school when everyone went off to college and got jobs and whatever, he didn't. He stayed at home with his parents. They're past retirement age but they still work to support him. He got very very fat, already was a little chunky back when I knew him, and just hangs out at home all day as far as I know. He plays video games, watches TV, basically has all of the same interests he did in high school even though it has been years. And of course, he has no romantic or social life. I avoid him whenever I go home to visit family because he always wants to meet, read, drink in someone's basement, and have these reliving the good old days moments where all we do is talk about things that happened years and years ago, because those are the only good memories he has. So, even though people from my class have died, become drug addicts, etc, this one is still the saddest. He's on reddit, a lot of them are on reddit. I would be willing to bet that he is. I graduated high school a year ago and I am terrified this will happen to one of my friends. I realize it really hasn't been very long but damn at least get a job. I am actually excited for the day his parents pull the plug. Played basketball with these two twins. One guy was 6 feet 8 or so. Built like a bean pole and the most carefree guy ever. To the level of irresponsibility sadly. The other was 6 feet 2 and built like the meanest linebacker you've ever seen. They couldn't have looked more different or acted more different. But thing is, they really were best friends. They were great guys and great players. Fast forward to maybe 5 years after high school. I see the linebacker dude at a conference or something. I'm not sure exactly the context. But he's a software engineer now. Graduated from a good school. Got a good job. I'm so happy for him. I ask about his brother, he goes super frown, and tells me his brother got leukemia or some other horrible disease, I honestly don't remember which, but basically he got sick like a month after graduation, and terminally, and rotted away and died. The guy was almost in tears telling me, I felt horrible, I gave him a huge hug I didn't know what to do, it was so weird. I went back home, and asked a few friends who I was still in touch with. And the one guy said it was worse. He got whatever disease. Which apparently is genetic runs in families. So the twin still has to be haunted he'll get it. But then it didn't actually kill the 6 feet 8 dude. The 6 feet 8 dude killed himself cause he didn't want his mom and brother to have to take care of him. The whole thing was like a punch in the gut. Normally I'd never edit a post but this got me thinking way too much. I wrote this to someone and thought I'd share it. On the good side. Last memory I have of the 6 feet 8 guy was him dunking like a mother ducker at least 3 or 4 times an hour last game. Then the whole team going out to the bar and getting blasted mostly underage. Ops. And him being the life of the party. I had my first girlfriend in 8th grade. I really liked her. She was my first kiss. We were practically inseparable for almost that whole year. Which is a hell of a long time for a middle school romance. She ended up going to a different high school and we drifted apart after that. After I graduated I would sometimes get drunk and look people I used to know up online. But I could never find any trace of her. Years passed. And I stopped thinking about her as much. But I did still occasionally try to look her up. Always drew a blank. Finally. 15 years after 8th grade. I found something online. It was her obituary. She had died of cancer 3 years earlier. She was survived by her husband and 5 year old daughter. I'm sorry man. My friend joined the army and was deployed twice to Iraq. 
he was discharged and came home with severe PTSD. He couldn't hold down a job and was on drugs from the VA until after about 6 months they decided he was cured. Then he got into doing crack and started carrying around a gun with him. The last time I saw him he was heading into the mountains at 2am in the middle of a blizzard saying this was the only way to get fresh powder. I haven't seen him since and I honestly thought he had died but I recently found out he was sent to prison after shooting his crack dealer and robbing him. Oh dude. That is crushing. She was a really smart and creative girl but had a horrible home life. Her dad suicided by jumping in front of a train. Her mom was psychotic and did messed up stuff like killing her pets in front of her. She ended up dropping out of school early and dated abusive older guys who got her into hard drugs. She was an arty and bright girl who was in my English class. I didn't interact with her much, but she was always very kind. She pursued a PhD in philosophy. I ran into her at a train station 15 years ago and we exchanged a couple of emails after that. Two years later she went out for a bicycle ride in our hometown and disappeared. Our hometown went through a massive search for several days. The entire city seemed involved. Her body was found near a large river. She had been assaulted and killed. No suspect was found until two years later when they caught the killer, who subsequently confessed. I was really good friends with a girl from elementary school up until high school. She started hanging out with a rough crowd and pretty much told me to f off. Life moves on. I move out of town. A few months ago, my Facebook feed blows up with did you hear about what happened to friend. I pull up the news story and she was messed up on drugs and killed her own 2 year old daughter. She is in prison now. Holy shit that's brutal. Hope it didn't affect you really much. I try not to think about it. She wasn't the same person I knew. The drugs did something to her and that person was lost forever. My best friend from school is now doing up to 20 years in prison for rape. I'm not all that sad for him because if you're going to rape someone then you totally deserve the full force of the law. But he has two young children who suddenly are left without a dad. Not long before that, his brother committed suicide. 2. I feel terrible for his mother. Losing both of her boys in the space of a year, I also feel terrible for his victim, and for his children. I recently was on a jury for a case where a married man, with three young boys, had led a double life, where six girls, ranging between ages 7 and 26, had come forward about him either sexually assaulting or raping them. The wife had backed him up saying he'd never do such a thing. And then as soon as she heard about what he'd been doing to the girls, she realized he'd been doing exactly the same to her, but because they were married, she never considered it as rape. All of his friends and family were so surprised by it, because he seemed like such a lovely man. But through court appearances, his true self came out and they all realized they had been manipulated. We put him away for 21 years, and the only people I felt really bad for the throughout the sentencing, not the court case were his three little boys. Growing up and knowing what your own dad did would be awful, of course. I felt dreadful for those girls, but the relief on their faces when they heard we'd found him guilty and he'd never be able to touch them ever again, it made the sadness on those three boys' faces stand out. We'd done exactly what we could for those girls, and that will forever stay with me. But those boys, never seeing their dad again and being way too young to understand why, did upset me a bit. My longtime friend left for the army after high school. He was always willing to help people and do everything he can to make your day just a little bit better. On his third or so year he came back to my hometown on leave and accidentally pulled out in front of a dump truck and got t-boned. He's been in a coma for over 3 months with a broken back and severe brain damage. But, just said good afternoon to his mother yesterday. I lost my brother in an accident 6 months ago. And I am in tears of joy reading that your friend was able to speak to his mother yesterday. I have been watching my mother grieve and I would not wish it on anyone. A parent's grief is unimaginable misery. A good friend of mine from high school went off and joined a frat in college. He was a good kid. Didn't do drugs. Rarely drank. Good grades. As a pledge he was driving a car for an older brother trying to find a parking spot. He was pulled over for expired tags. The cops found weed, cocaine, and molly in the car. Even though it wasn't his drugs he took the blame. 5 years in prison. 
she died of cancer. We lost touch over a boy. Of all things, she had a crush on my high school boyfriend. She got cancer in her early 20s. Lived for over 5 years. But ultimately lost the fight. She kept an online journal which I eventually brought myself to read after she passed. The hopeful entries were the worst. For years she was convinced she would get better. I was in a video store when I saw an old schoolmate walk in with a toddler in a stroller and looking very pregnant. We were both 19 at the time. She was smart kid. How did she screw up so bad that she had two kids before she was out of her teens? Because love infatuation can make people do stupid things. I have a cousin who is beautiful, intelligent, and not one to be bossed around. She was set up to graduate high school a year and a half early, and already set up to enter college at 17. But instead she dropped out 2 months before graduation to run away with a white trash dump shit that would get drunk and beat her. She ran away with this loser because she couldn't bring him around the family after the first time he gave her a black eye. Mainly due to the fact that she was well aware we probably beat him to death. No one understood what she saw in him. He was fugly as hell. Dumb as dog shit. Super lazy. And is covered in ridiculous evil clown tattoos. Ended up having 3 kids with him before they broke it off for good. She is now a mother of 3 at 25 yo. While working full time in a law firm and finishing up her bachelors. And just like before this several year bout of dumbassery. She is rocking at it. Maybe not as sad as other situations. I ran into a friend years after graduation. We got to talking and I found out she was moving and offered to help. A few days later we got to her house and I was shocked. She was living with a low life boyfriend in a trashy apartment that they could no longer afford. All the furniture we moved was shabby and broken. Stained and ripped couches. Broken dresses missing drawers. Nasty looking mattresses on the floor. When I had known her she lived with her parents in a nice house. The kind that had a fancy living room for company and then a family den for actual use. Beautiful dining room with dinner served on rare china. That sort of house. I don't know what happened to change her life so. But it was so sad I still think about it 10 years later. My brother's best friend was throwing a football around with some kids at S fundraising event for someone who had been in a terrible car accident. The football got stuck up in a tree, so he climbed up the tree to get the football down. He tossed the ball down, then started to make his way down the tree, and lost his footing and half jumped halfway down the rest of the tree. He landed square on his heels. While standing he looked straight into the faces of the kids and said that hurt. He then fell over and passed away. He had severed his spinal cord from the impact of the fall at the base of his neck. Still miss your everyday Dale. My best friend who I did everything with when I was a child got hit by a drunk driver when he was 8. He become on life support and was officially brain dead. Will never forget the look on the parents face when they plugged away the life support. It's like they lost a part of themselves and never saw the joy on their faces again. It's not nearly as sad as most, but my closest childhood friend. We went our separate ways in middle school, never did anything with her life and is just in an endless cycle of still lives with parents. Meets guy, moves in with guy for a few months. Things go bad, moves back in with parents. No job other than a few part time stints at grocery stores. No car, no own place to live, nothing besides several brief relationships. It's a small town so it became pretty public knowledge when she had spread an STD around too. My other childhood friend ended up joining a cult like religion. Think Duggar type. Marrying a man 25 years older than her and immediately began popping out babies. So many girls I knew as a kid ended up having babies before their 21st birthday. These stories are pretty tame compared to most but it's still pretty sad considering I was the bad one as a kid and I turned out the most normal well adjusted of my group of friends. I told this story on another thread about my friend one. I had known one ever since I was in kindergarten and we, we were really close growing up. We had sleepovers pretty much every weekend and he joined my for my family camping trips every summer. I was an only child and he was like a brother to me. Then a bunch of us were transferred out of our grade school by our parents in the 6th grade because of they were unhappy with the administration and felt we could learn better elsewhere. Even though I lived on the south side of Chicago, I ended up in a school on the north side with another friend of mine, Manny, while one ended up going to a school closer to his house. One and I still hung out sometimes, but we started drifting apart more and more. 
I could tell his new school was changing him and by 8th grade he was part of a local crew. At the time I was really into graffiti and rap, so even though things were changing, we still found things we had in common. The last time I saw him, I was at his graduation party. After the whole family thing was over, we were hanging out with some of his friends from the neighborhood to smoke some weed. Then one and I decided to go for a walk. I had a backpack full of spray paint, so we went to the train tracks by his house to hit up some trains and walls. I put up my name and he put up his gang's tags. As we are bombing this one wall, we hear a voice from below. There is some guy yelling up at us. I don't remember what he said, but it really posses one off. I had never seen him like this before. He was like a completely different person. He started running after this guy and out of instinct, I just followed him. The other guy bolted and he chased after him and I chased after him. After a few minutes, he lost him and stopped and I was finally able to catch up to him. He still had that crazy, angry look in his eye. But then I also noticed he had a knife in his hand. It was then I knew that I did not belong there. He started talking about getting a couple of other people to find him. Apparently they had some beef with a guy, which is why he was so angry. I convinced him to let it go for now and go back and smoke some more weed to chill out. We did and I crashed at his house, just as I had done for so many years. But after that night I wanted nothing to do with the lifestyle he was getting involved in and even though we still talked on the phone sometimes, we never hung out again that summer. After we started high school, we lost touch completely. I still thought of him a lot and wondered whatever happened to him. So I would google him sometimes, but never had any results. It wasn't until last year I finally found him when I used his middle name in a search. There were about 6 or 7 different mugshots from his various visits to county jail, mostly on possession charges. It made me sad, because he was really smart and had a lot of potential, but at the same time I was glad I didn't go down the same path. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.